Howdy champs, my name is Mohit and people let me straight away start off with the browser preview, the end product that we are going to create. This is it. Now look at this rectangle uh, which has a dual uh, colored background. Now I saw this kind of a background uh, some time ago and I was wondering how was this created, you know, for, I was actually staring at the monitor for a few seconds and pondering how you know how did we actually get this kind of a, a background and then I could uh, figure out okay now look at the uh, image at the bottom that you know the uh, the twin cigarettes and uh, a red colored band going across it telling you that it's uh, injurious to health smoking kills how how do you think this was created now the answer lies in the similarity between the uh, top rectangle wh wh which says uh, smoking kills and the, the image at the bottom there's something very co you know something uh, common and what's common is that both of them actually utilize linear gradients css3 linear gradients people that is the answer to both of them it's actually so simple i'm going to uh, create that uh, create um, you know this effect and uh, you'll understand how very simple it is to actually uh, do this which proves uh, time and again that CSS3 linear gradients uh, radial gradients etc so very powerful people just uh, pour all your creativity and you'll get something uh, really cool let me also bring up the uh, local site folder or the folder where all the assets are uh, kept locally uh, by the way this JS folder has got nothing to do with the project so just ignore it okay this is uh, one single image that we are using dimensions of 400 390 pixels <coughs> and uh, this is the uh, HTML document you just uh, had a preview of it so that's all basically uh, just one image as, as an asset apart from the HTML CSS document okay so let's begin and uh, let's do thing almost from the very beginning to get a good idea so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna empty all the rules internal or embedded rules I'm gonna empty them empty this rule as well okay I'm gonna empty completely um, the HTML as well I'm left with the bare uh, bare minimum code people right oh so let's examine the code that I'm left with I'm using HTML5 doc type Mm, I've left the title as document but uh, you should change it there's one uh, rule out here which is pattern and another one which is pattern one uh, these are ID selectors simply because they have hash in front of them okay, okay there's one more rule out here I'm gonna delete that too okay so whatever goes inside the opening and the closing style tags is internal or embedded set of rules so we have two internal or embedded rules out here and uh, rules as always go inside the head of the document inside the opening and the closing body tags people let's start uh, inserting some content so I'm I'll be using emmet code assist package to code out real quick just press tab to expand the code like this that is how emmet helps you okay so I have a div with an ID of pattern another div with an ID of pattern one and between the two divisions people I have two line breaks this way <coughs> right if I bring the browser up at this point and refresh I'm gonna see nothing obviously there's nothing inside the divisions as yet and you know I'll not be touching uh, the divisions at all whatever I'll be doing I'll be doing with these three rules okay so let's uh, tackle the first rule first let's create the first pattern first first design first the top design that is let me go with the width and height of 440 so a width 400 plus a height of 40 expand the code through tab cool now let's use the background short and property people and linear gradient let's follow the syntax okay <coughs> excuse me now if you remember there was a band you know there was a band of uh, 
color black and color orange let's see how that was actually created if I say orange once comma orange twice comma black first time and black again now this isn't the same as orange comma black orange comma orange comma black comma black is different from orange comma black and I'm gonna prove that to you let me save the uh, document up and bring the browser up let's refresh so you see we have a band um, a dual colored band you see an orange band and a black uh, a black band right uh, so that's my linear gradient of course I'm gonna modify it and as I said this is not the same as uh, orange comma black so momentarily if I change the code and bring the browser up and if I refresh do you see it's not the same you know right oh I'm not gonna get into the details of why this actually happened but you see the more the colors the you know there are some invisible color stops that get inserted right okay so first of all you saw it was a horizontal structure I would want to change the horizontal structure to an angled structure so I'm gonna insert an angle it should be going at uh, let's say 68 degrees now this is something that obviously uh, suits your taste buds suits your project I'm going at 68 you could, could have gone at 58 or 48 or whatever that's entirely up to you right <coughs> and if I bring the browser up now if I refresh see the change people it's actually angled out but you see right at the center is kind of spread you know there's a gradient uh, it's, uh, the edges are not hard we want the edges to be hard how do I do that it's very simple just by inserting the color stops quite intelligently people and if I go orange at 0% so orange sorry orange starts at 0% from the very beginning continues up to a 50% right and then black also starts at the same point 50% and ends at 100% yep cool so if I save the uh, document up now and if I refresh you see the you know the hard edges have been uh, achieved the trick was very simple people the orange ended at 50 black started at 50 All right so this is uh, and you know 68 degree angular uh, linear gradient just angled out at a certain angle why 68 is simply because you see there are uh, you know the edges are a little uh, curvy they're not smooth uh, just to keep them smooth I kept it at 68 at certain angles it's more jagged the edges are more jagged than they are right now uh, 68 worked best for me right at the same time people for the first um, Div. I would want to insert an H1 element tab uh, and say smoking kills. Okay, and for the second word, I'm gonna have opening and closing span tags going. Why will become very clear very soon. So I have span opening closing nested inside h1 opening closing which are in turn nested uh, inside div opening closing with the id pattern right let's save the document up let's bring the browser up let's refresh and uh, yeah you can see the word smoking kills <coughs> now let me continue uh, with the first id selector okay i'm going to ensure that I set the text line property to a center save that's gonna center up the text left right obviously but you see half of it is actually hidden I'm gonna uh, set it okay in uh, no time right what I'm gonna do is uh, first I'm gonna space out the two words I'm gonna use the word spacing property I'm gonna set it to 80 px this works best for me you could have chosen a different value for yourself that's okay just spaces out the two words properly since the second word is actually lost you can't see it but you should uh, you should uh, be seeing it very soon I'm gonna create uh, another rule out here in line number 19 
let's say I'm going to target all span tags that are uh, the first children, the direct children of H1. Right. And I'm going to say color. I'm going to use the color property and I'm going to set the color to orange. It's so simple, people. Let's see the result. Let's save the document up. Let's bring the browser up. And let's refresh. And you can see the other word too. Because since this uh, the second word had span tags around it, and the rule was constructed in a manner which says span as the direct child of H1 should acquire the color orange. So the second word gets affected, not the first one. Alright. -o. Quite cool. In fact, I could have just used a simple rule like this. You know, I'm going to show that to you. If I save it up, if I bring the browser up, and if I refresh, it still works. But you know, the more specific you are, the better. Because, you know, the, your, your whole document could have multiple span tags, and maybe you don't need it everywhere. So the more specific you are, the better. Righto. So, um, that takes care of the first image, the first effect. Let's uh, focus on the second one, okay? Which is uh, as simple. So let's go with the, let's say, a width of 400 <coughs> and a height of 400 as well. Tab. Sorry. Right. Background. Shorten property again, linear gradient people. Mm, and this time, mm, I'm going to have transparent, comma, transparent, comma, red, comma, red, comma. Transparent, comma, transparent as my different color bands. Transparent, transparent, red, red, transparent, transparent. Now, as we have seen earlier, it's not the same as transparent, red, transparent. It's slightly different. If I were to save the document up at this point, and if I get the browser up, if I refresh, this is the result. Okay, and again. This is not the same as transparent, red transparent. Let's show that to you. Let's bring the browser up. Let's refresh to see the change. Because when you have uh, more colors inserted the way I actually did, it automatically inserts uh, equally, uniformly some invisible color stops. Okay, very, very cool. So I'm back to the way I was. So transparent, transparent, red, red, transparent, transparent. Okay, now if I insert the color stops quite intelligently, I'm going to get what I'm looking to get. And uh, even before that, people, I would want the uh, gradient to be at a certain angle. This time it's going to be 48 DG, 48 degrees. Now again, that's a personal preference people you choose your own uh, angle yeah cool <coughs> now uh, let's insert the color stops at the right places so transparent 0% this transparent at let's say 48% right -o. this red Mm. Transparent zero percent, transparent forty eight percent, red at forty eight percent too. Okay, I'm gonna create the hard edges, people. This red at forty eight percent as well. And then transparent at fifty two percent. This is gonna be at a hundred percent. Let's save it. Let me just think. Have I done the right? Uh, have I, you know, inserted the color stops at the right place? Yeah, I think I'm. I am. I should be fine. 
And if I refresh, hmm, there's some there's something which is not quite right. Let me just think. Hmm. I think I got it. 48 out here, 48 out here, and this is 52 actually. Yep. So basically, creating a band of red which extends between 48% to 52%, uh, a 4% the red colored diagonal band people. Now I should be fine now. Yep, I am. And why 48 degrees again a personal preference people? It creates lesser of uh, jagged edges, but you could have chosen a different value. Right. You know, different uh, angles create uh, smoother or jagged uh, edges. So check that out yourself. <coughs> right -o. now uh, from here on it's, it's very simple people I'm gonna create a 20 px of uh, border but at the same time people if I'm using the background property I am allowed to insert multiple background images uh, or multiple backgrounds so I'm gonna insert through the URL another background which is cigarette dot jpg image okay let me do that too and if I save the document up, bring the browser up, and if I refresh, there you go, people. I'm going to insert the um, twenty px of border. So twenty px solid red. Save it, and there you go. I don't have the border yet. 20px solid red. Did I actually save it properly? Let me bring the browser up and let's refresh. Now it's fine. And if I'm going to round it, people, I should be using border dash radius and set it at 100%. Old trick, people, that's going to round my division off completely. Round it off this way and uh, there you go end result perfectly the way I actually wanted to see people people at many places have not used uh, vendor prefixes uh, I can actually avoid it by going vendor prefix free in a manner that I'm about to show you if I um, link it to the in fact if you remember there was a, 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 a JavaScript folder a JS folder which, which had a JS file if I link it, link up to that, uh, you know, that JS file, I should be, uh, you know, that file itself is there for a specific purpose, doing a specific purpose. It allows you to go prefix free. You don't need to write your window prefixes at for the many CSS3 properties, people. All right, dot JS. Now, uh, since I'm actually linked to that file, it's gonna take care of uh, the, you know, vendor prefixes in the background. I don't need to really bother about it. That takes care of it, people. I'm going vendor prefix free, fearless, you know, prefix free, fear free now. Let's save the document up. You can request for this file. I, I'll give it away to you. You can even Google it up, and uh, you can grab it too. It's so very easy to do that. All right, and you can enclose these script tags anywhere in the document, ideally after the opening closing style tags, but actually anywhere. Seriously. Okay, I'm actually done. I'm sorted, and this is the final product. All right, people. So I hope you found uh, this information useful. Although it's so very simple, you know, doesn't you don't get it at the very first. Uh, you know, you just see it. You you think how this was actually. You you can't believe it. These are actually linear gradients, right? But if you look deeper, you know, if you imagine, if you pour all your creativity, you can do it too. It's so very simple. Uh, so people, I hope you uh, will thumb the video up. I hope you'll sub. I hope you will comment. Uh, please do. I love to read your comments. And I'll also hope that uh, you will continue to join me for more and more tutorials. You have a good day. Bye-bye. Peace.